Hey everyone, it is Pastor Nick, and I am so glad that you have joined us today. Whether you're joining us from our online campus or you are with us at our East Campus in Tucson, Arizona, we are thrilled that you're here. And wherever you feel comfortable worshiping alongside of us, we want you to know that you're welcome at Pantano. If you are thinking about joining us at our East Campus, we wanna go over a couple things with you just to make sure that there's no surprises. First and foremost, we wanna let you know that we're doing every single thing that we can to create a safe environment for you to come and worship God physically at our East Campus. This includes our staff and our volunteers wearing masks throughout the entire process, enhanced cleaning, physical distancing, all of those things. We are taking every precaution that we can. And if you're a guest, we wanna let you know that wearing a mask is not required. However, we do recommend it just for safety. Regardless, wherever you're comfortable, we wanna let you know that we have a spot for you. And it's perfectly okay to continue joining us at pantano.online. As we begin today, we wanna to let you know that we have a connect card to fill out because this is an important way for us to get to know you just a little bit better. And so if you're newer to Pantano, go ahead and fill out that connect card. You can find it at pantano.church slash next step. And while we're at it and we're getting ready for service, we wanna let you know what you can expect. Today, we're gonna to have some worship songs and we want you to stand up and to engage in worship. And so if that's in your living room or if that's in the auditorium with us, however you feel comfortable, we want you to engage in worship. And then after a couple songs, Pastor Glenn is going to be giving us a fantastic message that is relevant to today. And then we're going to enter into a time of communion. And so we're ready for when communion comes up in the service, go ahead and grab some bread and grab some juice so that you can have that set aside so you don't have to worry about anything and can take communion when it's at that point in the service. And then if you would like to give to Pantano and what God is doing here and around the world, you can certainly do so by visiting pantano.church slash give. Your host is also going to put that in the chat room for you, pantano.church slash give. We are so thankful that you are with us today. And we don't want this just to be a one-time thing. We wanna develop a community and develop a relationship with you. And so I wanna invite you after service to join us at Starting Point. Starting Point is happening online only after service and you can get there by going to pantano.church slash next step. And you can meet with me, Pastor Nick, uh, the online campus pastor. You can also meet with our discipleship pastor, Pastor Cindy. And we would love to get to know you and you can ask any question you want. Again, that's at pantano.church slash next step. Well, we are getting ready to go into worship. So let's go ahead. Let's stand up. Let's take a breath and let's get our hearts ready to give God praise. Hey, welcome today. All of my friends in the room, good to see you guys. And if you're joining us online, we are grateful that we get to worship together. So come on, put those hands together. Chains around us, but 
today. Amen. Hey, this morning when we worship him, if you're at home and you're worshiping or if you're here in this place, we have an opportunity to press in today 
to worship a living God that's moving and he's active in our midst. And he's so worthy of praise, he deserves our breath, he deserves our, our, our songs to him um, because he's so faithful and he's so good. You know, we've, we've had a hard year, we've, we've been through a lot, um, but God is faithful. And, uh, and, and this morning, I just wanna encourage you to just press in and just reach out and worship God because he is worthy to be praised, amen.
Jesus, we praise you in this place. We thank you that the promise that you gave us 2,000 years ago, you sealed our fate. And it's a fate of life and hope, life everlasting and life abundantly right here on this earth. Church, if you're comfortable, let's just lift our hands to him. Maybe right there in your home, you can lift your hands to him. Say, God, I trust in you. I surrender to you. Take my life, build it upon your love. Take all that's in me, all that's left over, God, and just take it. God, we want to be built upon you. Be our foundation today. Holy Spirit, move in us to the deepest parts of our lives. Thank you for being a God who's worthy. You're the only one that's worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Let's praise him one more time, right where you are. Come on. Amen. 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 God is good. You guys can have a seat. Today we are continuing our series called God Is. And today we're looking at how God is love. And this comes from a passage that's found in 1 John chapter 4 where it says, Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And right now in our culture and in our relationships, our world needs God's love more than ever. And every week when we take communion together as followers of Jesus, we are reminding ourselves of God's love for us. When we take the bread and the juice that represent Jesus' body broken for us and his blood spilled out for us, we are reminding ourselves that God went first, that God loves us. And today we're going to be looking at a question of what does love require of me? And, and God's love required that he sent his son to die in our place. And so I want to invite you to just take a moment whether you're here in the room or whether you're watching at home in your living room or in a coffee shop, and to just bring before God those areas of your life where maybe you're out of step with his love. Maybe there's a relationship that comes to mind where, where you're really not giving and showing love the way that you need to. Or maybe you need to just take a moment and ask God to remind you of his love for you, that you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he loves you. And so I wanted to ask you to just take a moment, and when you're ready, to take the bread and the juice and just remind yourself that God is love. Good morning, it's so great to see all of you, your real faces, this is wonderful. I have the privilege this morning of introducing to you one of our, uh, our newest hire, uh, Sean Haynes is a pastor that we've just hired to be our next gen pastor. He will be overseeing our kids, students, and young adult ministries, and all those who are responsible for that. So Sean, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Thank you. 
My uh, wife and I, Nell, have been married for 26 years. We've been a part of Pantano for the last three years. Uh, I have two boys. Adam just graduated from Desert Christian High School, class of 2020, and Josh will be graduating in two years. He is going to be a junior this year. Um, and we just, we love Pantano. And so this has been such a blessing for us uh, to now get to be a part of the staff uh, to serve alongside you. And we are super, super excited to get to be a part of that. You might recognize Sean a little bit. He's been on stage. He's led worship. He's been part of the band. He's led at Southeast. He's uh, been participating quite a bit in our ministry the last three years. So we are so fortunate to have him. I want to just pray over Sean, his leadership. And uh, if you'll just join me, you can extend your hands if you want. Um, and let's just pray over him and his ministry here at Pantano. Father, we are so blessed to be your children to be able to uh, be blessed by you in so many different ways. And God, I just pray for Sean and Nell and their family as they uh, transition to being full-time staff here. I just pray a blessing over Sean's leadership. Give him wisdom uh, and thank you for his love for kids and his, his love for students. And Father, uh, we pray, we pray that you continue to bless uh, the people that are in his life and the people that he will come in contact with through this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn your attention to the screens. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Great to see you. Well, we're entering our new normal. Notice I didn't say normal. Normal has passed. And we're, uh, we're trying to figure out what this new normal uh, looks like. And, uh, you know, it's been three months uh, since we've been able to meet on any of our campuses. And uh, for those of you online today, we are physically uh, meeting again uh, here on our East Campus. And uh, welcome back, everybody. So glad to see you. Glad you're here. And uh, we are, we'll be resuming our uh, services on our Southeast Campus as soon as we can. We're working with the Vail School District on that right now. And uh, and thank you, everybody, here for practicing uh, physical distancing and all of the, those things that will help keep us safe. And, and I, and I, I want to be sure to welcome those of you who are online. And uh, so glad you continue to join us wherever you're at, at home. Uh, we have people that watch us at work and literally all around the world. And uh, glad that we're able to offer both online opportunities as well as on-campus opportunities uh, in this season. And, and whatever option you choose, that's absolutely fine. We want you to feel comfortable with either of those options, and we're going to continue to provide quality online services. You know, our world has changed in such a short time, and it continues to change incredibly quickly. And, and the question is, how do we navigate this new world, this, this new normal? How, in, in the midst of all the chaos that COVID-19 has brought and all the changes that are, that are still developing through this, how does God want us to react? In the midst of the, and in light of the racial injustice that's been re-exposed again, how does God want us to respond? How are we to, 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 re, to react to all of this? I think most of us are feeling a combination of, of confusion and anger and frustration and, and even fear, overwhelmed, you know, confusion over what all this means and where this is going to take us. Some of us feel lost in the midst of this chaos. How do we respond? And I believe the answer to how we respond always goes back to the nature and the character of God himself. And specifically, what we're doing today is we're continuing our series, God Is, and there's a blank. And what we've been doing is filling in that blank with, with, a, with a nature, uh, an aspect of who God is. And today what we're looking at is this, God is love. 
That's such a simple sentence. God is love. And yet I think it's the most comprehensive description of who God is. He is love. And it's not just that God loves, that, that, that he does these loving things or these loving actions. He actually is love himself. And, and, and so that just shapes everything about everything we can possibly understand about God. It does shape how he responds and how he acts. And, and yes, God loves us. He expresses that in very incredible ways, in such deep ways. But he's also so much more than just what he does. He acts in love because he is love. And, and so that's what moves God. And, God. and God, because he is love, he wants the best for every aspect of his creation. And COVID-19 and all that's resulted as a, as a part of that and continues and, and the cry for justice only reminds us of how much we need a God who is love. He's love. And then when God is in us, the God who is love, then, then his very nature begins to change our nature, that, that we become more and more like him. So, so God is love, and, and so the test, if he's in us, is how we love others. If God is love and he is in us, then we're gonna know that he is in us by how we actually respond to others. You see, our character and our actions will be shaped by him and will become like him. God is love, so we are to be his love in this world. And yes, absolutely we need laws, just laws, we need reforms, but more than anything, we need God's love in us so that it can flow through us to others. And the Apostle John wrote a, a letter, we call it First John, and he talks specifically about this, and we're gonna look at this in First John chapter four, verses seven through 12, and I wanna begin with the first couple verses of that. First John chapter four, we're gonna start in verse seven. John writes these words, he says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. John actually reminds us of Jesus' command, we're to love one another. But, but he doesn't stop there. He, he tells us the source of that love. If we're to love one another as Jesus loves us, where, how does that happen? Where does that come from? And he says that that comes from God himself. When God's love is in us, it will flow through us. It'll flow through us to others. If, if we're born of God, if we're saved, if we actually know God, we can't help but practice God's love. And, and, and John goes, goes further, because there's just a logic here. If we don't love others, if we don't love like God, then we really don't have a living relationship with God, a, a relationship that allows him to influence our lives. We don't know the real God if we're unable or unwilling to love others, and, and we've gotta let that sink in. It's a sobering truth. And I, and I actually believe John is warning us. And he doesn't want us to escape how dramatic this truth is. The test of whether God is really in us, whether he's really influencing us, the God who is love is our willingness to love others. And when we don't love by, by choice or just by neglect, it's a clear signal that we don't have that real, living, active relationship with God. And, and what John's providing for us is just a very simple spiritual self-check. 
This is how we know how real that relationship is with God. I love others because I know God and I've experienced him and I've given him primary influence in my life. And if I don't love, it's because I've limited his influence in my life or I don't really know his nature and his character. You see, God's love, the God who is love, puts others first, sacrifices for others. And that kind of love in us, that's not natural for us. That's not a human natural way to respond. Loving without conditions like Jesus loves without conditions, that just, that's just doesn't originate within, within us. And humans alone can't sustain that kind of love. It's impossible. See, as our relationship with God grows and deepens, we learn to and we choose to love more like God. Why? Because God is love. Now, what's interesting to me is that I think too many in our world today reverse that sentence. The scripture says God is love, but, but too many of us naturally reverse it to love is God. For so many in our culture, love has become their God. That's a small G God. L- love has become, I, I, I think, the predominant God in our culture. You see, when love is that thing that we want, we want love. We seek love. We, 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 we depend on love. We depend on it to experience pleasure. We depend on love to feel safe. We depend on love to feel worthy. And when we do that, we give love the power to dominate us and to control us and to manage us. When we primarily seek love for ourselves, we actually miss love because that is not love. And I think there's a sobering question we have to ask. Is love primarily for me or from me? Is is love about me or is it about the person beside me? Is love about what I get from love or is love what I actually give to others? Love that's primarily from God is a love that always is seeking to, to respond to those around us. And what God wants us to deliver to this world is his love flowing through us. God is love. It's it's so simple. And it's so deep and profound. God's love, that's his nature. That's who he is. And it's out of who he is, his nature, that then he acts. Everything God does is love because of who he is. And and that's what John says as we continue in John chapter four. Look what he says starting in verse nine. He says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as atoning sacrifice for our sins. Love gives. Love sacrifices. It seeks the very best for others. It doesn't wait for others to respond. It initiates what's good for others. Love puts others first. It serves. And God is love. And he acts in love. And he acts in all of those ways. And that's why what John reminds us is, and he, the ultimate expression of that is he gave his one and only son to die, to take our place, to take the punishment of our sins upon himself, to offer us forgiveness, and to lead us into a life-giving relationship with God unhindered. 
Why? Because that's who God is. He loved us so much. He was willing to sacrifice his very own son. And that is incredible good news. And so, whoever you are, whatever you've done, wherever you're at in in your, your view or any kind of connection or relationship with God, understand this. God loves you. Right where you are. Whoever you are. And he's inviting you into a relationship with him. He's offering you forgiveness of whatever you've done, however you've messed up. And he offers you powerful spiritual guidance to lead you through life, ultimately leading you into eternity, to a life that never ends. And all that you have to do is say yes to that kind of love. And so wherever you're at, I want to encourage you to to think seriously about inviting the love of God into your life. And and if you need help with that, if you have questions, or if you're ready to make that decision, I want to encourage you to let us know, uh, to go to our website, pentano.church, and 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 next step, and and let us know. There's a button there that says, I've decided to follow Jesus. And if you haven't yet, you can still go there and let us know, and we'd be glad to talk with you about uh, any questions that you have. And then John gives us the conclusion to this in, in, John, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. He says, again, the second time he says this, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. Listen to this. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. I want to encourage you to to read these verses on your own. Take some time to reflect on these. These these are so, the words are so profound. And right now, if you're online and you've been distracted ordering something from Amazon or ordering lunch, I want you to come back right now, okay? Come, Come back. All of us, God loves us to the max. He is crazy in love with each and every one of us. And we need to sit in that truth long enough for that to truly begin to influence us and change us and affect us. Because until God's love becomes full within us, we'll never be able to express that to others. And I fear that too many of us have never really experienced God's crazy, wild, complete love. Or maybe we've forgotten it. He loves us not because we're that good, not because we're deserving. He loves us because that's who he is. He can't help but love us. And I love what John said and what we just read. He said, you know, nobody has seen God with their eyes. So how will others see God? They will see God in us as we love each other, as we love other people. Our world more than ever needs to see God. And the way that our world will see God is by letting God's love move through us. God is love. So we are to be his love in our world. But what about the folks that are, that are really hard to love? And we all have those folks in our lives. Uh, one of the categories. I, I actually, as I was thinking about this, I thought I could do a whole sermon series on the categories of people that are hard to love. <laughs> One of those categories for me are people who mistreat my kids or my grandkids. You mistreat my kids or grandkids, you're going to have trouble with me. You know, and, and all of us have experienced that in different ways. Someone slanders your kid or, or, or somebody bullies your child 
And it's really hard to love somebody who's hurt one of your own. By the way, think about that in terms of God's situation and how this world has treated his son. Well, my family, as some of you know, my family and I, we were missionaries in Ukraine right as uh, the Soviet Union had broken up. And, and at that time, the education system in Ukraine was, was, in a, was just totally, uh, just, as a disaster. And so when we were going there to be missionaries, we brought with us a veteran teacher to teach our kids. I, we had two kids, and, and they were school age at the time. And, and then there was another missionary family there that also had two, two kids. So we had this little, small, kind of a homeschooling thing with four kids. And, and uh, 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 of the four kids, three of the kids were really good students. You know, the kinds of kids that sit down at their desk and, and do their work and pay attention to the teacher and cooperate, you know, just those perfect kids, and they get great grades. One of those kids now is a doctor. Another one of those kids has gotten a master's degree. That was three of the four. The fourth one was mine. <laughs> she was different. I call her a creative type. Uh, she doesn't like to sit. She doesn't like to follow rules. She likes to make up her own rules, and she likes to be in charge. And um, she's a lot like her dad. I remember on the very first day of school, kindergarten, we were at the kitchen table and she was, had a piece of paper and she was writing all this stuff on the paper. You know, and I'm, first day of school, I'm a proud dad, you know. And, and so I, I, I said to her, I said, w what are you writing on this paper? And I saw some numbers and some letters and she says, I'm writing everything down that I already know. I'm gonna give it to the teacher so she doesn't have to teach me these things. That gives you an idea of the kind of child that we were dealing with here. <laughs> now, previously to going to Ukraine, uh, she was in school, and you know what? We had great teachers for her. Those teachers understood her. They used her creativity. They used her leadership ability, and, and, and they loved her, and she loved school. But when we got to Ukraine... The teacher we had was different. Uh, I described her as a strict traditionalist. She was this by the book, follow the rules, sit down, be quiet. She managed the classroom with an, with an iron fist. She was more concerned about controlling the, the classroom than about what the kids were learning, I think. And, and when my daughter didn't follow the rules, when she didn't sit down, when she wasn't quiet, the teacher was actually abusive to her. Abusive with words, punished her, singled her out from the other uh, three. She was so mean to my daughter that my daughter almost every day came home in tears. We tried everything to change the situation and nothing worked. Uh, it was the teacher's mission to mold my daughter into being this quiet, compliant, don't ask any questions, don't make any suggestions kind of person. And, and it just broke her down day after day. I didn't like the teacher. If I'm honest, I didn't love that teacher. Who's that person for you right now? may not be how somebody's treated your child. It may be how somebody in an angry, ugly way made a comment on your social media post. Or maybe somebody who has total disregard for you or somebody you love. We all struggle to love certain people. It's an incredibly high standard to love like God. So how do we get there? How do we get to that place where we can love those that are really hard to love? What is that spiritual journey? What does it look like? And, and I believe this. I believe this is what John is saying to us. It has to start with God. 
that, that we continually and consistently experience God. Why? Because who is God? What's his nature? God is love. And if we have this living relationship with him where he's really filling us, then we will know what love is we'll be able to express that to others. It has to start in us before it can flow out from us. How big is God's love in you? Which really is asking the question, how big is God in you? And as big as God is in us, and the, and, and the more influence we give him in us, that's the extent to which we'll be able to allow the love of God to flow through us. And I believe the greatest need in our world right now is for you and for me to allow God's, to be big enough in us that his love overwhelms us and that overwhelming love of God then can flow through us. And that's the challenge is how are we overwhelmed with God's love? I, I want us just to do a, a practical exercise right now. I, I want us to, to, to begin to remember and, and to deepen that experience with God's love right now. And, and, and what I want you to do is I want you to think about something about yourself that you don't like. So maybe, it's, maybe it's something that you did that you regret. Maybe it's a habit that you just struggle with. Maybe it's a, it's a character flaw. Maybe it's a failure that you remember. And Think of that time when you were at your worst. With that come the feelings of shame. Maybe a part of that's just the frustration. Maybe it's that, that's that part of ourselves that we just wish we could hide from others. And, and here's what I want you to remember. And the reason I want you to think about that is that he loves us at our worst. He fully, completely accepts us at our worst. It doesn't mean he likes what we did or how we've acted or that character. It doesn't mean that that's a good thing, but he loves us in the midst of that. The, the thing that you hate about yourself is the very thing that makes God's love even greater over you. He, he, he wants to overwhelm you with his love because of whatever that is in you, and his love deepens as he knows your struggle. And so right now, wherever you are, here, or at home, at work, I want you just to pray a pr this prayer. I'm gonna put it on the screen. You don't have to say it out loud. You could just say it quietly. But I want this to be your prayer, and not just this moment, but may this continue to be our prayer. God, in spite of this thing I hate about myself, I'm grateful that you love me fully and completely. You've held nothing back. You love me at my worst. See, God loves you at your worst. And the God who loves you at your worst and lives in you can help you love others when they're at their worst. When God's love is so big in us, then we're able to love more people. We're able to love people longer. We're able to love the, those who are harder to love. And that's what John was saying when he said that God's love is made complete in us. That love grows as we embrace his love in our lives more and more. I can love that teacher who mistreated my daughter. I can love that person who made that ugly, critical, angry comment on, on my Facebook page or, or whatever the social media you use. You see, only when God's love overwhelms us will we be able to love. God is love. So we are to be his love in our world. A, a love with no limits. 
See, that's what God's love is. It's a love without limits. It's the love that Jesus requires. It's a, these are how, this is how Jesus described that love. Jesus said, we're to offer mercy to others as God has been merciful to us. We're to forgive others as God has forgiven us. We're, we're to love our enemies because that's how God loves. We're to go the extra mile. We're to put others first. See, love isn't a list of rules. It's an idea, it's a principle, and it's the idea that we love others the way God loves us. I, I love the question that Pastor Andy Stanley asked. He says, it's a simple question. What does love require of me? May that be the question that we ask over and over. What does love require of me? I, I work with a group of people, and, and uh, this week, they're not a part of the church, but boy, they really disappointed me, and I was so frustrated this week. I, I, just on Friday, I said, I'm, I'm gonna quit. And then I read my sermon. What does love require of me? May we ask that day by day by day. Think of that person who is hard to love. Think of someone in need. You know, in the context of, of the, un, uh, the racial unrest and turmoil, we got to get past the debates about what racism is and what, what has caused it and, and about the politics of it. We got to get past all of that. Not that those aren't important at some point, but really the question is this what does love require of me? That's what matters. I may not be able to fix the whole system, but what does love require of me? I was in a great conversation this week with, with one of our church members who's been really wrestling about all of the, the racial tension and the questions. And, and, as, and as we talked through it, I was so blown away by this person. They came to this place. They said, you know what? I can't fix all those problems, but I know this. I know there are some boys that are on the wrong path and I've, had a, and I've known these boys, and we're gonna, we're gonna invest in their lives so that they don't go and end up in a really bad place. That's what love requires of us. That's asking the question, what does love require of me? And so I wanna give you a challenge. And, and, and it's the what does love require of me challenge. Our team has identified 31 ways that you can respond in love. And, and, and we're not gonna ask you to do all 30, 31 of these. So it, what, here's what I want you to do. I, I, want, I wanna direct you in a moment to those 31 things. And then what I wanna challenge you to do is just take a risk. Take the number of your birthday. I was born November 23rd, so I would pick number 23. Out of the 31, pick one. Start with your birthday and then do what it says. Number 23 on the list of 31 is that I'll walk my neighborhood every day and pray for the families in my neighborhood. If you can't actually do your birth number when you choose this, pick another one. And so here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want you to, to, to text LOVING to 31996. LOVING to 31996. And then you're going to go to a link. That link will take you to our next step page. And when you click that, the, 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 the um, what does love require of me challenge, you're going to see 31 numbers. Pick one of those numbers. Start with your birthday. And if you can't do that, pick another one. And then do that. Take the challenge. You see, what does love require of me? Love is in action. Love is, is, taking, is making intentional effort. It's letting God overwhelm us with his love and then letting that flow to others. And can you imagine the new normal where we consistently ask the question, what does love require of me? How much better our new normal will be, better than our old normal, 
if we're just consistently asking that question, what does love require of me? We can be the change that God wants to bring into our world, a world that's in chaos, a world that's lost, a world that doesn't have answers. If we'll simply, intentionally, authentically answer that question, what does love require of me? We can't control everything else in our world, but we can control how we respond to that question. Let me pray for us. Father God, never in my lifetime have have I seen the need for your love to fill me and to fill us. Never have I seen a world that needs to know you and see you, a God who is love. And so God, fill us with your love. Overwhelm us with your love so that your love can flow through us Use us. Let us be your love in this world that others might see you and know you and experience your love. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are new to Pantano, I'm so glad you're with us, whether you're here in the room or you're with us online. And and right after the service, I want to encourage you to go to Starting Point. We want to help you take a next step in whatever your journey of faith is. And and you can do that online. Uh, That'll happen right after our service. Just go to pantano.church forward slash next step, and we would love to be able to interact with you in that way. And uh, our prayer partners are still available online. Uh, if you'd like to pray with someone, that's, that's always available. Thanks for joining us, those of you who are online. And those of you who are here uh, on our East Campus, may I please, please, please ask you as you exit, practice physical distancing. And if you want to hang out and talk, we've got uh, a shade out in the outdoor basketball court. There's drinks out there. Feel free to, to, to socially connect. Just maintain some physical distance. Don't jam up at the doors as you leave. You're dismissed. God bless you all. Have a great week.